Average spending on home improvement up 20% according to data from Angie. But that's not really helping Angie's stock, which has had a rough year, down 30%. Joining us now for an exclusive interview is Angie CEO Oshin Hanrahan. It's good to have you back on the show, Oshin. So, so what happened? Everybody's spending to finally repair and remodel. Why has your business fallen off? Great question. We're really focused this year on making sure we build something over the long term. So if you think about what's going on, you've got homeowners coming to get more work done in their home than ever before, which is really good for our Angie services business, where we deliver services directly to the homeowner. That business up 160% Q3 versus Q3 last year, $117 million in revenue in the quarter. And then you've got our other business, so our ads and leads business. And if you think about what's going on there, that business is so durable, but it's also really challenged by the fact that our pros have the biggest order books they've ever had. So you think about those pros that are out there, they want to build their brand. It's actually a huge milestone for us to keep that business flat year on year mm. while we lean in and provide other services like the new Angie Services product. So so basically what you're saying is, is the plumbers and the contractors and all the other pros on your site just don't need to advertise and that makes up a good chunk of revenues? So that makes up a good chunk of our revenue historically. And what's happened is those pros are now looking to Angie to really build their brand. So before it was more focused on performance marketing. Now it's really about making sure that they build their brand using the Angie product. And we've built out other products for them as well. Things like payments, financing, video calling, uh, remote quoting, and other features to make sure that we've got a real, a real long-term product that pros want to use want to use to build their business. Have you seen any drop off in demand for the, the home services as we've gone through this pandemic? We've had these spurts of reopening. We're currently not in one because Omicron is spreading. But so, so what are you seeing on the demand side there? Look, on the demand side, what we're seeing is this shift towards the home being more central than ever before isn't going away. And we see that in terms of the spend that's going on in the home, as you pointed out, up 20% year on year to $15,500. We're also seeing it in the types of services that pros are leaning into and the customers are leaning into. If you, you, know, you think about this historically, it was about things like painting and bathroom remodels. For the first time ever, we've seen smart home projects really creep into the top three. And what that means is homeowners aren't thinking about their homes just as an equity investment anymore. They're thinking about it much more as the value of what the, mm. the true intrinsic needs are. So homeowners are really focusing on home as a functional item much more than an investment. And that's that, that kind of speaks to this long-term shift of home being much more central and much more, much more thoughtful in terms of how people think about their lives and how they think about work-life balance and remote work and all that stuff comes together and really means that home is evolving and changing and people are gonna have to spend to, to make their home fit for purpose. What, what are they spending on? What are the top services? So they're spending on some of the traditional stuff like bathroom remodels, like interior painting, like decorating. And then it is it is this stuff like getting home offices set up. And we see that come through in smart home projects and we see that come through in other kind of utility items that people are putting into their homes to make them more fit for this, this kind of hybrid work model where people spend some time in the office and some time at home. And then you think about you know the, the, the things that go alongside that to, to make sure that childcare works in the home, to make sure that all mm -hmm. the various components of life really fit, uh, fit neatly inside the home. What about the, the pros, as you call them, the people that that are contractors and that are plumbers and that are electricians. We've seen this huge shift in the labor market. It's, it's called the great resignation where workers are quitting their jobs and they're being paid more and there's this tightness out there with companies struggling to hire. What, what has that meant for how many people are on your site looking for work? Look, I, I think short term, the, the impact has been a contraction across the board. The, you know, the, the, the labor market is, is tighter than ever before. I, I, I think that trades, the broad trades, might actually be a long-term beneficiary of the great resignation. You think about people going into the trades, it's an unbelievably lucrative career, unlimited earning upside, it has huge job satisfaction, really, really great retention once people are in it and once people build a book of business. So I think over the long term, what we're gonna see uh, is more and more people joining the trades 
as a result of this desire for more and more autonomy, more and more self-control. You think about you know the average tradesperson, there's probably not a small business out there that has more autonomy, self-direction, and control than the average tradesperson. And I think we're starting to see that as more and more people are looking to the trades as a way to, uh, as a way to escape corporate America. But, but without the benefits though, right? It depends. It depends how people structure their. Uh, it depends how people structure their employment. Obviously, a lot of folks go out by their own benefits, by their own insurance. We've long term invested in making sure that uh, we have a platform where we want to give more and more benefits and access to those benefits to our pros.